Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 119, and you're watching two of the guys who put the I in Anglican. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. And today is September 10th, 2014. George, let's move on to the important news. The important news is you've moved. You are no longer in Vero Beach. You've moved to Lakanto. And uh, how many trips with the U-Haul did it take? Not a U-Haul. We had, I rented three 24-foot trucks oh, geez. and loaded and unloaded, and I nearly killed myself. Uh, my grandfather has this hu had this huge, huge desk, mm -hmm. uh, oak, solid oak thing, and I dropped that on my foot. Uh, one day and then the next day I fell off the back of the truck uh, and it took I, I had scheduled three tr uh, two trips with the truck mm -hmm. and oh maybe three or four days yeah it took three trips with the uh, three trucks and almost three weeks to move back and forth so it, I'm not 30 years old anymore. I forgot that. Well, uh, any more than two trucks uh, officially qualifies you to be a hoarder, and you can join Hoarders International. Um, it's interesting. We got to watch some of your exploits on uh, Facebook and saw the foot. Um, is that healed up now? It can fit in your shoe? Oh, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. It, I, I do smell uh, a great deal. I've been buying Bengay, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I've compared it to Asper Cream, and the generic uh, found at Walmart, and I can tell you, uh, the eucalyptus uh, strength Bengay, that really gets my, uh, gets me going. So, no, uh, it, I had 140 boxes of books. Oh. Um, Man, you're right, Kevin. I am a hoarder. I don't think I've ever thrown a book out. And people, I purchase books all the time. I'm sent books to review. Mm -hmm. um, and I just keep them all. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have a warehouse. I, I, we rented not a storage unit, but I rented a warehouse to store the books because we now live in a, in a two-bedroom villa having moved from a the family home because our girls are now off in college. Wow. So you moved to a condo. Saturday was your first church service at the new church. Tell us about your new church. Well, Shepherd of the Hills in Lakanto. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful congregation. It's the highest church in all of Central Florida. High church? Wow, George. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, it's 138 <laughs> feet above sea level. Uh, <laughs> it's an evangelical Anglican congregation uh -huh. of the Diocese of Central Florida. And it is 20 years ago, there was nothing here in Lakanto except cows. Mm -hmm. In fact, between my house and the little town of Crystal River and the church in Lakanto, three miles away, there is one stoplight, one McDonald's, one Walmart, and cows. There are more cows between here and there than there are people. Wow. But it, this community has grown from nothing over the past 20 years. And this past weekend, we had about 150 uh, 160 people at this, actually that's not quite right. Uh, we had 172 people, mm -hmm. in three services, and this is our low season. Mm -hmm. So hopefully when the snowbirds and, uh, and the uh, people come return from the north and the season starts up, we'll hit our stride. But Oh, it's exciting time. Yeah, up during the summer here in Connecticut, you see all the Florida license plates. And right about the end of September, they all disappear. You're like, whoa. <laughs> well, it's still hot here. Yes. I mean, not only is this hurricane season, it's the hottest season of the year. So I was I was loading and unloading trucks in 90 degree plus weather, 100% humidity, dropping things in my foot. My wife thinking, why is this man so stupid and cheap that he would not hire movers? Uh, I, I, I remember you had a good friend recommend that you hire movers. <laughs> yeah, this guy I know who I, I do this show with, he said, you know, George, you're not 30 years old anymore. I know, Kevin, but a man's got to do what a man's, man's got to do. do. <laughs> and a man's got to drop things and smash things and realize that he's getting old when he doesn't want to wow so we want to thank you for all who prayed for george and his move and his new church as he starts a uh, a new chapter of his life as a priest of uh it's saint anne's on the hill what's what's the name 
Shepherd of the Hills. Shepherd of the Hills. Yeah, you know, because I have, we have no memory. You know, hills. <laughs> hills. And shepherds for the cows. We have I'm the sure only hills in Florida, I think. <laughs> that's right. Well, uh, it, it actually it doesn't look like Florida uh, because it is rolling countryside with oak trees. And it actually reminds me of where I grew up in the, the Philadelphia suburbs uh, in the countryside. But then you drive five minutes. Five actually 10 minutes and you're at the ocean right. it, it, but it's the west coast of florida which i don't know if i really would call the gulf of mexico the ocean <laughs> hey yeah uh, you get what you get you know the rest of the 48 states are like yeah george that's what you call the ocean George, let's move on to some more news, some crazy news. Um, I'm here as the producer, editor, senior dude at Anglican TV to tell you this is the end times. And I'm telling you this because I've been reading Facebook the last couple weeks and have just been freaking out by some of the stories I've seen in there. Uh, the first story that, that really caught my eye was last Friday. I read an interview with uh, Pope Francis where he says, I am a sinner. Okay. Pope Francis just came off as a Baptist. That is a sign of the end times. Uh, later in Friday afternoon, I read an article where Billy Graham said if he were to do it all over again, he would be an Anglican evangelical. That is, okay, there is a sign there. Somewhere in Revelation, it says when a Baptist says they want to be an Anglican, that's the sign of the end times. Now, you know, Kevin, Kevin <laughs> I have to say, neither of these things surprised me because... Yes, the Pope is a sinner. Yes. And, you know, I'm an Anglican evangelical, and why wouldn't Billy Graham want to be like me? I mean, come on now. These are self evident truths well, here. Well, they are. I mean, uh, the, there is built into us a nature to be uh, loving of a liturgy. And um, it just, I fell in love with the, I, I grew up a, you know, Lutheran Methodist, you know, uh, kind of a, a mishmash of many denominations. Um, so when I found the Episcopal liturgy, I'm like, whoa. First of all, God likes us to redo them. Yes, okay. <laughs> but we all get to do the same thing every Sunday, and it, there's a continuum, and ah, that's really cool. And I think you know Billy Graham has discovered that um, it's not just a uh, non-dispensationist world. Um, it, it, there's something about a liturgy that's very attractive and comforting to the human soul, not just to the God we read to. Well, the source for this Billy Graham story was the Church of England newspaper. Mm -hmm. Hooray! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's me, folks. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> they had an excerpt of a forthcoming book, uh, a biography written of Billy Graham, where Billy Graham has been uh, spending his declining years talking to uh, biographers and telling people what is his, what's important in his life, this and that. And one of the things he said that John Stott, late John Stott, has been one of the most profound influences upon his life. And he, Billy Graham, has become to understand over the course of his lifetime not only the necessity of preaching the word, but participating in the life of the sacraments. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! The end, man's got it! End times, right there. That's it. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, we, are a, we are a Catholic church. We yeah. are a Protestant church. Yes. We're the Episcopal church. The Anglican church. <laughs> because we, we, we hold up both aspects of this, both the word and the sacraments. And Billy Graham's saying, that's the way you should do it, folks. Oof. Now, the thing about the Pope really isn't a big story. The story is more that reporters are so dumb that they don't understand that the Pope is just repeating things in the Bible. That's right. And they're thinking, oh, the Pope is admitting to terrible things that he's done. No, no. folks, that we are all sinners. All our righteousness is like a filthy rag, the Apostle Paul tells yeah. us. And the Pope is quoting this you know, book that you might want to read before you start reporting on religion. <laughs> Uh, what a world. It is a world because we've been encaptured the last three weeks by something called the ALS Challenge. And you want to lower the, the debasity of mankind to raising money by pouring ice and, and water on their head. Um, wow, it worked. What, $25 million? So, uh, you know, people can pour ice on their head. And then I'm watching another thing. Um, there's this church. Uh, is it in Florida, Texas, or the Olstein Church? Where is that? Well, Kevin, I'll give you a hint. Yes. Big 
hair. Big hair. Texas. So, Texas. <laughs> sorry to insult my Texas friends. But um, the, Mr. Olstein and Mrs. Olstein run a huge church, probably the largest mega church uh, in America. Uh, they fill up their uh, auditorium with 40,000 people uh, each week, and those people give money. Um, they had a robbery uh, a couple months ago where the robbers took $600,000 cash, not checks, cash from one Sunday service. Wow. So, um, <laughs> I think I'll, I think I'll supply there this coming Sunday. That's Sundays. right. I'll, I'll just take the, the ready loose offering. My... There, there's something about the prosperity gospel, but uh, Mrs. Olstein gets up, and uh, her name is Victoria, and she says, "We need to stop." She's co-pastor. Yeah, she's, she's co-pastor. Co we not need... the not the pastor's wife saying something silly. <laughs> this is the co-pastor Say, you, saying something silly. <laughs> she says, "We need to stop." You know, thinking about going to church just for God, we need to go to church for ourselves. Wow. Okay. End times. I, I, I introduced this segment with end times. I'm going to continue with end times because this is just, well, wait, this is the Facebook age. This is the Twitter age. This is the uh, generation me. Well, the Eosteans have become the perfect uh, religious, clerical, pastoral couple for this age. It really is about us. We do need to go to church for us. We need to start worshiping ourselves, um, which we do through Facebook, Twitter, and this whole social media engine that goes on. And I'm like, wow, here we are, the pinnacle of heresy. We are now the gods we need to go to church for. Well, this, Kevin, Kevin Joel and Victoria Osteen are a modern uh, inc incarnation of a long, long, long American heresy. Mm -hmm. It's the gospel of Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. I gotta be me. I gotta be free. That's right. And they do it my are, way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I did it my way because my way is God's way. Mm -hmm. The the Osteens are practitioners of the prosperity gospel, as you mentioned, where God loves you and wants you to be rich, and you're being rich is a sign of God's love. If you're poor, that means God doesn't love you. If you're a really true Christian, you're rich, you're thin, you're happy, you're successful, mm -hmm. you're like the Osteens. Yeah. And this is a profoundly false teaching. I, now, there may be worse heresies out there. Uh, oh, Gnosticism. I, let's so, yeah. not, <laughs> somehow we always come back to Catherine Jeffrey Chory. I don't know. I don't why. know. It's a... <laughs> but, but Kevin. We'll, we'll give a practical example of sure. this. Uh, Nicholas Oko, the Archbishop of Nigeria, has given several interviews about the Ebola outbra outbreak. That's that uh, hemorrhagic fever that's killed about 2,000 people that we know of. But the CDC, Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, says it's now a full-blown e epidemic and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Archbishop uh, Oko is saying, go see a doctor, practice uh, hygiene, pray. But do not be taken in by these charlatans like a prophet, prophet T.B. Joshua, who for $10 will send you holy water that will wa ward off the Ebola virus. God does not want you to pay for your salvation. He wants you to pray for your salvation, Archbishop Oko is saying. Do not be fooled by these prosperity gospel people who, want, who think that you can take a shortcut to salvation through cash. Yay. And... It's the same thing that Victoria Osteen is preaching. It's what T.B. Joshua and these other charlatans in Africa are preaching. Salvation by works, in this case, writing a check. It's one of those things where you can believe in God or you can be a God. And the Osteens have chosen to be gods. I have chosen to follow a God. 